Today we're going to be taking a look at the Ring Video Doorbell. In case you're not familiar with it, this is the first and only battery operated Wi-Fi enabled HD video doorbell. What that means is, after you've installed it at your home, you can get a live video and audio feed of your front porch directly from your smartphone or your tablet, even if you're not at home. But let me start off by saying I did receive this doorbell for free for a review, and Ring is compensating me for providing my opinions, but they are my own opinions. And before we get too far into this, let's go ahead and unbox it and go through the setup process. In the box you get the doorbell itself, a quick install guide that is very handy, an amazing little tool pouch that has all the pieces and parts that you should need to install it, except for the drill, obviously. It also has a micro USB charging cable, and the mounting plate with a built-in level. Taking a quick look at the doorbell, the first thing you're going to notice is that 180 degree wide angle lens that's capable of 720p video. The one that I've got is the antique brass color, but they do also have three other colors available. Then there's that large obvious button that, as you would expect, rings the doorbell. And when it's ringing, it does a little LED light around it, which is very nice. But for the person pressing the doorbell, they also hear a chime as well, which is a nice touch, I think. It lets them know that they've actually pressed it and that the other person's hearing something. On the back of the device, you'll see the micro USB. USB charging port, as well as the big orange setup button. Mine showed up about 75% charged, so I went ahead and hooked it up for a few minutes, and then I headed outside to go ahead and remove the old doorbell. Now as I'm saying this, Ring can be used completely wirelessly, just sending the notifications to your phone or your tablet, but you can also wire it into an existing doorbell setup and have it ring the chimes inside your home, which is what I chose to do. Doing it this way also provides it with power through that doorbell power, so you shouldn't have to charge it ever again. But if you choose to do it all wirelessly, the built-in 5200 milliamp hour battery is supposed to last about a year before you have to recharge it, which would require you actually taking the doorbell off the house, taking it inside, and then charging it for, I think they said, up to 10 hours. After I unscrewed the old doorbell, I had to unscrew the two wires connecting it to the house. Then I put the mounting plate up and screwed it into the door frame over the existing doorbell hole. Using the attached level made it very easy to get everything nice and straight, and in just about a minute I had all four screws holding it up in place. I removed the level from it since it was not needed anymore. You cannot have it on there behind the doorbell, so make sure to take that off. I attached the wires to the poles on the mounting plate, and I was ready to go. As a side note, I went back afterward and I swapped the wires around, as you'll see in a minute, because I think I wired them backward in the first place. Next, I had to set up the doorbell, so I installed the app on my phone. I set up an account, which also had me confirm my location. Then it had me press the big orange button on the back. Took about 15 or 20 seconds to figure things out between the phone and the doorbell, and then it asked me to log into my wireless network, and we were done. It was after that that I found a section in the app that gives full installation instructions as well. It gives full tutorial videos and everything depending on what settings you pick. So in case you don't feel comfortable doing it the way that I did, you can watch one of their videos and sort of follow along, which is extremely handy. But at that point I went back out front and used the included Torx bit and screwdriver and put the doorbell on the mounting plate, screwed it in, and I was ready to go. Now if you're concerned about the doorbell being held on by just two little Torx screws, I wouldn't be. First off, someone would have to even recognize what it is and what sort of screws it takes to actually remove it. But even if they did, Ring has a policy that they'll replace it free of charge if it's ever stolen, which is a great policy if you ask me. Plus, since it does have the motion detection, if you have that turned on, you would actually get to see the person taking it off your house, and it would be stored in the cloud if you have the cloud storage option. I've been using the Ring doorbell ever since the day that I got it installed, obviously, which was about three weeks ago now, so I thought I'd go ahead and give you some of my thoughts and impressions on it. When I first set this up, I was curious if the battery would actually charge off of my house wiring or not, and whether it would ring the existing doorbell in our home. Both of these concerns were quickly addressed when I noticed the battery percentage was increasing when I checked it inside the app, and also, when you press the doorbell, it, well, rings the chimes inside the house. Thumbs up there. Right after I got everything set up though, we actually left town for vacation for a week, so it was perfect timing. I went ahead and set up all the motion detection zones inside the app, and I actually set it to be a little bit too sensitive, checking too far away. So while we were at the beach, I received quite a few notifications that there was motion at our home when it was actually just neighbors driving around in the cul-de-sac. Unfortunately, if you want to change that motion detection, you do have to make a change in the app and then physically press the doorbell button to confirm it. Not so easy to do when you're 600 miles away. So I just dealt with a lot of notifications and it did give me a chance to really thoroughly test out the battery life. After just a few hours, I saw that the battery had increased to 100% and it has stayed there ever since. So definitely wire into an existing doorbell if that's an option. But while we were on vacation, I was notified every time there was a package dropped off on my front porch, even if the delivery person 
person didn't ring the doorbell, which was a huge help, but that is an option you can disable in the app if you don't want motion detection. But if someone goes ahead and rings the doorbell and you're away, you can actually answer it and get a live HD video feed with audio and talk to the person standing at your door through your phone or tablet, which is really handy. And since it has built-in night vision, even if someone came to the door in the middle of the night, maybe attempting to break in or something, I could get a notification and I could act on it and see what's going on. As a bit of an unintended awesome side effect, when my in-laws were visiting last weekend, my father-in-law decided to stand out on the front porch for a few minutes for whatever reason, and the motion detection caused it to capture some really cool lightning footage. The Ring comes with a free 30-day trial of their cloud recording option, where you can go back through your timeline of activity and watch any of the videos captured by the device within the last six months, as well as download those videos. After the initial 30 days, you can either pay for their cloud service at $3 a month or $30 a year, or you can just access live footage so there wouldn't be anything recorded. One sort of downside to all this is there's not a watch now option built in. So the only way to see what's going on is if motion is detected or if the doorbell gets pushed. Not really a big deal since usually the only time you'd be interested in watching is if someone is actually coming to your door, but it is an option I wouldn't mind seeing. And that said, once my cloud service expires, I'm probably gonna give it a shot without the recorded clips just to see how it works out, but I've got a feeling that I'm gonna end up coming back for their paid service after a short time because it is really handy in case you miss that live notification window, which is only about 40 seconds. So to wrap things up, what do I think about the Ring Video Doorbell? I am definitely a huge fan, and it's still the highest quality Wi-Fi doorbell camera on the market. I love that it does motion detection and night vision, and that I was able to easily wire it into my existing doorbell setup. However, if you cannot wire into an existing doorbell, they do have a second product that's coming soon called Chime, which simply plugs into a wall outlet in your home, and as the name implies, it will chime whenever someone presses the doorbell. After having used this whole thing for a few weeks, it's kind of hard to imagine going back to not having it, so I definitely give this thing a big thumbs up and a recommendation. The Ring Doorbell retails for $1.99 on ring.com, and it's also available at Brookstone, but just for you guys, you can get the Ring for $20 off on ring.com using the coupon code ringlovestwill.tv. But that's gonna be about all from me for today. Remember to leave a thumbs up down below the video if you like this video, and subscribe to receive all of my videos when they become available. Thanks so much for watching, thanks to Ring for making this video possible, and I'll see you again next time.